Howdy folks, Jamboreeki here. I have played a bunch of Mario games before, and the Mario franchise is a part of my childhood, but I wouldn't say that I'm a huge fan or some kind of expert. Please keep that in mind as I review the Super Mario Bros. movie. 65 million years ago, a meteorite hit Earth, sending dinosaurs to another dimension, where they evolved into humanoids. Cut to present day, plumbers Mario and Luigi have a job to do, but end up bumping into paleontology student Daisy, who Luigi falls in love with. While out on a date on Daisy's digging site, a couple of valves have been sabotaged, so Luigi calls in Mario, but while trying to fix everything, the plumbers are knocked out, and two henchmen kidnap Daisy. Once conscious, Mario and Luigi find that Daisy has been taken to another dimension, so they jump in after her, arriving in the world of dinosaurs. No Hatton, ruled over by the tyrannical Cooper, who wants a rock around Daisy's neck, which holds the key to merging both dimensions. Daisy also learns that she is a princess, and that her father, the king, has been trapped in fungus. Can the Super Mario Brothers save Daisy's kingdom from Cooper? Now, this film had a really rough production, and that's putting it mildly. The script had constant rewrites during filming, the actors hated doing every scene, apparently getting drunk and high behind the scenes just to cope with all the madness. The budget went way over what was originally planned, and the directors were considered to be nightmares to work for. Everyone was pretty much winging it, just hoping to get the film at least done. Once released, it was critically panned with highly negative reviews, and fans of the original Mario games were very disappointed. Many have considered this film to be one of the worst movies ever made, but it has gained a cult following over recent years. So, where do I stand? Well, I think Super Mario fans have every right to feel let down, as their beloved wholesome game has been given a murky dystopian makeover, and the fantastical elements of the games were downplayed to save budget. There are at least some nods and references to the games, including Toad, Yoshi, Goombas, Big Bertha, the bombs and Banzai Bills. But some of these things have been changed so drastically that they hardly resemble what they were based on. There's also a very obvious tonal control problem with the movie. Everyone behind the scenes had their own ideas for what a Super Mario Bros. movie should be like. So there's the conflicting intentions to make it both a dark, futuristic thriller and a family-friendly fairy tale comedy. The end result is jarring to say the least. Adults will just find the goofy juvenile humour to be lame, while the grittiness and lack of colour might make the film less fun for kids. In addition, there's not much in the way of a plot, as most of the film just consists of characters trying to snatch the rock from each other, or characters quizzing each other where the rock might be. Over-the-top action sequences are thrown in to keep momentum going, but these sequences are clearly just distractions while the plot meanders. It doesn't help that the convoluted story is hard to get into as well, it's just too silly and complicated. With most of it being condescendingly spelled out to the audience with unnatural exposition dumping. 65 million years, we've been exiled here after the meteorite struck while mammals roam free in the other dimension. I really wasn't that bothered about the politics of this world or the fate of the rock, because there's no time spent on developing this dinosaur world beyond its futuristic aesthetics. But just because I'm fully aware of this film's problems does not mean that I didn't enjoy it. On the contrary, I had a lot of fun! <laughs> yes, this film's execution is messy and rough, but underneath all the chaotic nonsense are some charming elements that do work. Firstly, there's the Super Mario Brothers themselves. These two are really appealing main characters. I did enjoy their company and love following them on their adventure. Mario is a relatable everyman, a simple guy who takes pleasure in fixing things with tools. And even though he's been thrown into an overwhelming situation, he knows that he's just got to get things done and do the right thing. While Luigi is this adorable daydreaming fellow who may not be as skilled or mature as his big brother, but does have a big heart and will do whatever it takes to save Daisy. These two also have a great relationship. Sure, they'll sometimes make digs at each other. You okay? Yeah, you're the one without a pattern. Yeah, well, you're the old one. Mario, look! 
But this is all just playful banter. They do really love each other. Luigi looks up to his big brother, respecting his talents as a plumber and seeing him as a father figure. Mario here brought me up. He's been my, my mother my whole life. Hey. <laughs> my, my father. My father. He's been my father, my uncle, my brother, everybody. While Mario does everything he can to support his dopey little sibling, from helping Luigi get a date with Daisy. Do you eat? Yeah. Dinner? Sure. Tonight? Tonight? Oh. Okay. At six o'clock, all right? To making him understand Daisy's feelings. Until we can get things settled here and I can get to know my father. Come on, Daisy, you know how I feel about you, right? I want to be with you. I do too, but I can't. She's trying to tell you she can't leave you until she knows where she belongs. But if you loved her, you'd understand that. These two are a major strength of the film. I also adore the romance between Luigi and Daisy. Yes, it's far from a deep love story, especially when they spend most of the movie apart from each other, but man is it a cute and sincere relationship. Not only are they both equally nervous and self-conscious around each other. If you just want to end this right now, I would understand. You know, I was going to ask you the same thing. If, if you want to end this right now and you feel bad about that, but you want to talk to somebody about it, you can call me. But Luigi also takes a genuine interest in Daisy's line of work. He's not faking anything to get her to like him. He honestly finds what she does fascinating. Well, it means that a meteorite hit here a long time ago. And, well, we think it could be what destroyed all the dinosaurs. Wow, there were dinosaurs in Brooklyn? Daisy herself may be pushed into the role of damsel in distress, but she doesn't simply settle into it. She demands to learn more about her father. Where's my father? What about my father? Is he alive? Shows compassion for a poor, chained up little Yoshi and a sweet Goomba who used to be Toad. There's the spirit of a resilient and caring princess in her. One of the rare things that was praised by critics was the acting, and I have to agree. Even though they've stated that they had a rotten time on set, every actor seems to be putting their all into their performances. There's no half arsing or sleepwalking. Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo, Dennis Hopper, Samantha Mathis, Fiona Shaw and the rest are giving the best they can, bringing a lot of life and energy to this confusing script. Daisy, where are you? Daisy! Answer me, Daisy, where are you? Come on, this way. No, no, no. Let's go this way. No, it's this way. That's the echo. What do you know? I've been listening to Pats all my life. Come on. Okay. Sure, the actors playing the villains can get hammy, but it's this campy style of acting that injects a strong personality into the film. When you get your rock. When I get the princess. Princess? I need the rock and the princess Stacy. And I'll finally be able to merge our world with theirs. The effects for this film were certainly ahead of their time. I was quite taken back by the confident use of CGI at a time when Hollywood wasn't yet dominated by the medium. I actually gasped at a few of the computer effects because they seemed revolutionary for 1993. Sure, not every CGI trick looks impressive. Some effects have, well, dated poorly, but the experimental risk-taking is there. That same magic can be said for the puppetry. There's adorable little puppet dinosaurs on the streets, and the Goombas have tiny animatronic heads with goofy flapping mouths, making them endearingly dumb looking. <laughs> but the standout puppet, without a doubt, is Yoshi. Before Jurassic Park came along, this was a pretty impressive special effect. Yoshi has this authentic latex surface with realistic detail, can move quite fluidly, showcases a very cute personality just through movement, has a great practical effect for his iconic long stretchy tongue, but most amazingly, can actually walk. Yes, when Jurassic Park needed its dinosaurs to take steps, they cut to CGI. But Yoshi is here walking with his own robotic legs. That's so cool. To conclude, Super Mario Bros. may not be the most faithful video game adaptation, and it's no Citizen Kane when it comes to filmmaking or storytelling. But what it lacks in slick competence and high standard professionalism, it makes up for in sheer campy charm.
As a wacky sci-fi B-movie, I think it's a really entertaining experience. I get why a lot of people dislike it, particularly Super Mario fans, but I can't say that I personally didn't enjoy it myself, because I really did. I've been Jamboriki and I hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, then feel free to like, subscribe and share. So, what am I going to be reviewing in the next episode of Puppet Panic? Well, I think it's time that we took our toys out of their packages as I review Small Soldiers. Cheerio, folks.